Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mason Opera and our production of Jacques Offenbach's Mesdames de la Halle. I'm Joe Walsh, conductor of this production and professor and artist in Mason's School of Music and School of Theater. We are very excited to be able to bring you this special performance from Friday, December the 6th, 2019, which was presented in the Gregory Family Theater at the Hilton Performing Arts Center in Manassas. Jacques Offenbach was a prolific French composer during the mid 19th century, known mostly for his famous Can Can from his operetta Orpheus in the Underworld. <laughs> or his very popular opera, The Tales of Hoffman, with its famous Barker All. We consider Offenbach the father of the operetta, as he wrote nearly 100 of these and laid the groundwork for other composers of operetta to follow, like Johann Strauss Jr. and Gilbert and Sullivan, all of which eventually would set up the American Broadway musical. This one act operetta is a comic work or operetta buffa, as we say. In fact, this type of comedy is called a farce because of its largely exaggerated story, characters and situations, all very implausible, but rollicking fun to watch and enjoy. The story is set in an actual market in central Paris called La Halle or the halls. This centuries old market provided space for market sellers to set up shop and sell their goods, meats, seafoods, vegetables, fruits, and sweets. The central characters are a young love couple that are desperately trying to get married despite all the odds against them. Offenbach even had fun with the character titles like Sibylette or Chives, In Love with Crutopo, or bread crust in the pot. Raflafla, the drum major, is trying to hook up with nearly every woman in the market. Madame Poire Tapé, or Madame Whipped Pear, Madame Beurre Fondue, or Madame Melted Butter, and Madame Madou, or Madame My Sweet. As many comic operas go, mistaken identity often figures prominently in the plot. We have much of that madness in Mesdames, sometimes too much to keep track of. While the work was originally written in French, the talented students of Mason's Vocal Studies program, Professor Patricia Miller, director, will perform it in both French and English, back and forth, so you'll be able to follow the storyline easily in a wonderful translation by Mason Opera's artistic director, John Ayler. The music is of the finest quality, combining fast up-tempo numbers which reflect the multitude of confusing plot turns alongside beautiful melodies in which the love between Sibylette and Crutopo becomes real and genuine. Two musical techniques are found in abundance in Mesdames. The concept of rubato, which is a push and pull of the tempo. Here, I'll play a phrase without any rubato. <laughs> Now I'll apply a little bit of this rubato. Listen to what we have. Rubato adds a sense of elegance and charm to the music, and operatic composers loved using rubato in abundance in their works. The second concept is a cadenza, which comes from the Italian verb cadenzare, or to cadence or to end. It was a vocalization, often improvised differently from singer to singer, designed to show off their vocal technique. Sibulet's showcase aria, the most famous selection from Madame, is in three parts, and she sings a cadenza at the end of each part. But listen carefully for the final one, a short duet between the singer and flute. A word about our chamber orchestra. Many of you might remember the Broadway production of The Pirates of Penzance, produced by Joe Papp, starring Linda Ronstadt and Kevin Kline. Papp's used a Broadway-style orchestra, which lent itself wonderfully to the comic operetta style. We've done the same, incorporating a drum set player, Noah Dengler, 
flutist Julie McDonald, and the irrepressible Dr. Une Han on piano. So sit back, relax, and get ready for our farcical, fun, spirited, lively, beautifully sung, and beautifully played Mesdames de la Alla. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Hilton Performing Arts Center. Please note that audio and video recording and photography with or without flash are strictly prohibited. We ask you to take a moment now to turn off all electronic devices and refrain from text messaging during the performance. And please observe the location of the nearest exit. Thank you. Good evening. And welcome to Mason Opera's production of Orphan Box, Madame de la Halle. I am Professor Patricia Miller, Director of Vocal Studies here at George Mason University, and we are delighted that you have joined us this evening. Mason Opera is happy to share this charming one-act operetta this evening and to celebrate the 200th anniversary of its composer, Jacques Orpenbach. First performed in Paris in 1859, this delightful co uh, comedy revolves around the competitive street vendors of the famous Parisian fruit and vegetable market, La Halle. Performed this evening in French and English with translation by Professor John Ayler, our artistic director. This opera is full of beautiful music and the comedic genius of Wolfenbach. We are deeply grateful to many, many people who have made this production of Mesdames de la Halle possible. From our administrators, CVPA Dean Rick Davis and School of Music Director, Dr. Linda Monson, to our Mason Voice and Opera faculty and production team, and our extraordinarily talented students, we are indeed grateful. We would like to especially thank Carolyn and Mill Peterson and the Peterson Family Foundation for their leadership support of Mason Opera and endowed vocal scholarships. We wish to also thank our opera angels and friends of music at Mason who provide scholarship support and assistance in so many wonderful ways. We have included special envelopes in the program this evening should you wish to become an opera angel and support our vocal program here at Mason. To build and develop an opera ensemble, it takes dedication, hard work, and an extraordinary team. We are extremely fortunate to have world-class artist teachers, production, and artistic staff working closely with our students in our vocal studies division and Mason Opera. I want to sincerely thank our outstanding artistic and stage director, Professor John Ayler, our marvelous coach and conductor, Professor Joseph Walsh, and our wonderful coach accompanist, Dr. Une Kohan. Our production is brought to life by Jonathan Robertson's creative set design. You can see it behind me, it's amazing. Laurel Denier's wonderful costumes and Sean Cox's dramatic lighting. Our special thanks go to Eileen Goodrich, our extraordinary stage director, uh, stage manager. She's really like a director too. She does everything for us and we're grateful to you, Eileen. We want to thank the wonderful instrumental ensemble conducted by Professor Joseph Walsh with Julie McDonald on flute and piccolo and Noah Dangler on percussion. But our deepest thanks go to our students whose energy, hard work, and love of singing have made this wonderful production possible. We are grateful to you, too, our audience, for your support this evening. Thank you so much for coming. Enjoy the show. Thank you.
going to need a fortune to pay my bill at the greasy spoon. <laughs> Let's see if I can soften the heart of these beauties. Ah, Monsieur Rapaplan, was it for us your serenade? Of course, beautiful ladies. <laughs> oh, such a compliment. Just a little ditty to celebrate your charms, of which I, Rapaplan, a drum major of the finest regiment in France, I'm a great admirer. Oh, Monsieur Raffla, you are such a flatterer. Why are you so cruel oh. to me? All men are slaves to sex. And it's the colonel who supports this. <laughs> You're a good looking man, Raffla, but ever since my scoundrel of a husband left me, I have renounced love. A la barque, a la barque, herring on ice. Just let me. I was left in the lurch. It is now 18 years since my no good rascal of a husband, a beast who took my maidenhood, departed, banished from England, three pennies. He was a man of the highest station, a valet de chambre of a foreman, not exactly a sergeant of the royal. Oh, bones, I don't want to put on airs. <laughs> oh, imagine, Major, how blissful was our union. Night and day, displays of the tenderest affection, brought us our only child 18 years ago today, when he up and left me for a fan dancer in Valaclit. Men, they're all snakes. Oh, but Madame, drum majors don't generally engage in that kind of behavior. Unless, of course, it might mean I could write off two fates and four chains. Don't speak to me of love, Major. Don't set a trap. For my feeble virtue. But don't you want to hear the doctor I was told you last night? Uh, here I am, little mother, here I am. I hope she has a fortune of 2,000. Beat it, you old bat! Get home to bed, Methuselah! <laughs> <laughs> like I said, Major, for 18 years I have been reconciled to my destiny. <laughs> that dog of a husband who beat me and took my youth ran off. And left me. I tell you, Madame Bell, on the <laughs> Trump major sports chip at such a heavily, heavily a manner to ladies. And if it with you, I would definitely wish to share my life. My daughter is And your fortune of uh, 3,000? Oh, Major, you are a seducer. <laughs> but you must listen to the love song of the sunlight and the citadise, which I composed last night, especially for you. <laughs> You need to compromise me. I'm listening. <laughs> Remember, three thousand. Okay, Madame Hatchet Face, with your empty purse and nose full of nickels. Oh, I wonder which treasure I will manage to snag. I'd better hide my ardor for the little cook. The Major is jealous, and it could upset him. This inexplicable hesitation is suspicious. There's a cat among the little pigeons. I'd better disappear.
neglect my cuisine. Let's see, that is so lovely. Your servant, monsieur. Oh, yes, monsieur, fruit of all. Bonjour, mesdames, bonjour. Nine o'clock, you're not yet here. Ah, Ciboulette, you place my heart in quite a pickle. Let me fix my skirt. What do you need this morning, young man? Oh, nothing, ma'am. All my shopping's done. But your basket is empty. Wouldn't you like some lovely turnips? No, thanks. <laughs> I have some excellent leeks. Two pennies a bunch. I don't need any. Take mine, dear. I give them to you for a penny. Even if I don't want them? I'll give them to you for free. My angel. Goodness, Madame Bertrandu, take back your garlic and your looks. Um, call me Cidalise. <laughs> we'll see about that. Oh, young man, if you only knew. Call me Chloe. <laughs> <laughs>
Drum. Farewell, babe. 
major, I'm going to my stall. Now I'll go find Clutopo. I've been released. Bervondu and Madu are heading to jail. But I seem to have found an admirer in the commissaire. He seems to have a thing for me. Oh! <laughs> I'm all tingling and feel like a schoolgirl. <laughs> uh huh. The drum major again. Funny, he's been hanging around here for several days. Tell me, major, did you ever live in Bojibar? What's that? No, never. Then. <laughs> Seems familiar. Such hazy memories. She's not exactly a spring chicken, but when a fortune's involved, one must get to work. I must take advantage, dear Juan Cafe, of this opportunity to express to you, with the greatest sincerity, my burning desire to convey the most other wishes that in this passion of my advanced years. Enough of this talk, Major. True, you're a good-looking man, despite your age. A little deflated by your flavor. And still able to make happy any member of the fairer sex. Which would be an arrangement most agreeable, sharing a happiness comprised of my bliss and your fortune of 4,000 pounds. A most amazing group to cement our relationship. Oh, Major, you make me blush. <laughs> Just wait till I start wobbling my little ditty to you. The sunshine and the silly man, which I happened to write last night. A little ditty? For me? Mm hmm. Here it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
lovely and would give me great pleasure. But I must warn you that though my charms may be at their height, my fortune is definitely at a low point. <laughs> oh, that's... <laughs> so, I've decided to die a virgin, and I shall not be a party to your love, and not to you either. Um, off to the barracks. Remember, a virgin. I shan't die a virgin, but I will remain faithful to my sweetheart. Will you buy me a little drink? I offer a brandy at the local bar. Frenchmen are generous and the gallant. I will get her well lubricated. <laughs> no, sir, can't be in jail. But I jumped out the window. <laughs> but I fear you're in a bad mood this morning, dear Ciboulet. I was told by a fortune teller on the Pont Neuf that I would marry a young fool. What? Well, I am young and a fool. She met me. You think so? Why, Ciboulette? Of course.
Fiancé! I shall never permit you to marry this young man. We are only waiting for the consent of my parents to get married. That might be a little difficult since I am an orphan. <laughs> well, if you want to ask me, I'd let you know that a young lady who allows herself to be mauled in the public square. I couldn't care less. If only I could find my father, who is a sergeant of the Grenadiers. What's that? Your father? A sergeant? Mm -hmm. And he left me to be taken care of while he went on duty. Wait a moment. What is your age? <laughs> Eighteen years this spring. Your sex? <laughs> Feminine. <laughs> and you came from? From Vosgira. Oh, quick! A couch! A chair! I'm going to fade! Oh, oh quick! Help! Help! Oh, somebody help! Get a light jacket! I'm going to fade! I was one. Oh, 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 don't you strike me! Deal 
of affection. Careful what you wish for. <laughs> Monsieur le Commissaire, what shall we do? What shall we do? What to do? Well, first bring me a chair so that I might ponder this dilemma. <laughs>
my eyes, I found the young thing whom I took by surprise. It's time to tell us the tale. Please to tell us now without fail. Please to tell us this Please to explain. Yes. The corporal Aliso, the one who loved you so, was forced to take a post away without notice. They hustle me away, no time to say goodbye. So I took her with me, my darling baby, Sibule.